What's up, YouTube? This weekend is our very big show. Deadlock Pro Wrestling DPW forever. And today, I have one to three owners. One to trio, one third a DPW. John Blum, what's up, bro? Yo, what is up, man? It's about time, Malcolm. <laughs> we took, we had a minute to, uh, we had, I think this is the third, third time's the charm, though, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We tried a couple different to... times, stuck yeah. again away, but you know, it's, it's about time. It's about hey, time. Hey, you're, you're busy. I'm busy. You know, it, it just it's just how it is. But I'm, I actually really appreciate you having me on. Uh, I'm pretty sure you had Tony and James on. So I'm a little offended that I'm the last, but maybe last, you know, uh, you save the best for last. That's okay. Exactly. No, it's best for last because like, it's of a course. big interview. You know, we had to like make sure I had you on for this one. Hey, Dude, I, like, I my biggest that. question is like just starting this thing off. It's like I've asked Tony and James are sure. this as well. Um, was it like owning a wrestling company? It is uh, crazy. <laughs> there's a, I, I think it's 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 very fulfilling at the same time. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you wouldn't ex like think about when you're first doing something like this um in terms of like because you know you obviously you, you you get a building then you get wrestlers and it's like okay we're done no way like up until the bell rings and the show starts you are still uh finding stuff to do um but overall it is there was never a point i i didn't like i didn't really have aspirations uh to to be a wrestling promoter not that i don't enjoy it but it was never like in the pipeline um but now that i do it it's like wow this is like this feels like right you know what i mean um it feels like uh tony james and i work really well together uh you know the stuff that uh, i don't want to do one of them will do and, and vice versa so we're, we're, it's a it's a very very much a team effort but yeah it, it is is very cool i never thought i'd tell people hey i uh i promote wrestling shows it, that was <laughs> never in the pipeline but it's cool for sure man like what's been like the hardest part and what's been like the surprising like most easiest part of running like dpw so far the hardest part um is is usually not day of because i feel like day of is is honestly day of actually um is is easier than i i thought it would be just because we have so many people willing to help and wanting to help like you malcolm that's always there just looking looking to put some hands on something you want to help out with something i always appreciate that um but day of is like super is not as stressful as you would think it would be because it's you know you got there you know it, it's it's showtime uh whatever has happened at that point is going to happen the hardest part um, is, is I, th I think for us has been the venues. Trying to find a place to just run a damn show <laughs> is uh, is not always easy because uh, for some reason every Saturday forever a lot of places are booked up. So uh, that's just just how it goes. But usually that stuff just kind of yeah just having to um, and and on top of that um, the fact that the three of us bootstrap everything and try to do everything on our own makes it a little harder. So crunch days putting out dpw fire as like a weekly indie wrestling show is not easy because the turnaround rate is uh is pretty messed up <laughs> like oh, usually yeah. the show isn't finished editing until the morning of airing uh Ooh. which is uh, yeah that, which usually leaves us up doing it like very very late so yeah that it's just it, it, it's uh stuff like that is usually um is usually the hard part for sure man and like one question i know a lot of people always like always want to ask right sure. is that, like we know exactly what you look like like you're at the shows <laughs> and, like, well right now like what people can see is like this like you know nice little drawing of you why don't you show your face because like everyone knows what you already look like, <laughs> like the biggest thing. I, I, the funniest part to me is when people uh, finally do meet me in person and they're like, well, you look just like you're drawing. Yes, <laughs> it is a drawing of me. <laughs> of course. Um, I think it's just from habit. Yeah. Um, I've been doing content creation since I was 16 years old. Yeah. Um, I am 29 now. Uh, so it's been a oh. minute. So I've just been so used to not doing it that I feel like if I started including my video and stuff like that, I also, I just straight up don't have a webcam, like at all. I just don't yeah. own one. So I, I consider, I was like, you know, maybe I'll, maybe I should pop on camera from, from Malcolm. I was like, I don't even have, I'd have to do it on my phone. It'd probably sound like shit. Oh, I don't know if I can curse. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. No, uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, but yeah, so it's, I'm just so used to it. Um, I feel like if I started now, it might throw me off because yeah. I'm so not like unfamiliar with that world. Like Pulse and James, or sorry, Pulse and James, Pulse and Tony, uh, been doing that forever. You know, they always have had the cameras on, so they're they're used to it. I feel like I'd be distracted by like, oh, like I look like crap today. That'd be every day. <laughs> I mean, hey, it comes with like the benefit though, because you can look like whatever you want, and no one can see. Exactly, I don't have to worry about it. I don't exactly. gotta have clothes on, Malcolm. I don't. I can be naked all the time. Hell yeah, Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely too. I want to go ahead and jump in and talk about DPW forever. It's a big Let's thing go. coming up. Uh, where can they watch the show? Where's it gonna be located? 
All right. So DPW Forever, uh, which I would love for everyone to come out and see live. It is in Raleigh, North Carolina, April 16th which I don't know when this video goes up, but I assume it's it, it'll be, it'll be before, I'll still yeah. be able to say this weekend. Okay, yes, this weekend, April 16th, Raleigh, North Carolina. It's in an uh, Amaran Shriners building. Um, I'm sure uh, if you go to dpwtix.com, that's where you can get tickets. The address will be on there and all. Uh, that's where you can check it out. And if you are not in the uh, Raleigh, North Carolina area, which even though, you, even though you're not, DPW, and Malcolm can vouch for this, is very much worth making the trip for, man. Uh, there's is. a lot, lot of crazy. You can see Malcolm there. Why yeah, wouldn't you want to come out from Malcolm? Exactly. <laughs> Bro, I make a five hour trip every single time. It's good. He's a beast. I'm with you. I got, I will say, Malcolm, sidebar here before I continue on. Uh, I've never, I don't know if I've seen anyone smile for as long as you do through these shows. I don't know if there's ever a time I don't see you smiling when, I, when I'm hanging out. So I appreciate it's, it. <laughs> I, it's the best smile in the business, I got to say. It's, thank uh, you, thank you. Having you around yeah, is always I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so if you cannot make it to the event, uh, it'll be airing on uh, tape delay on dpwondemand.com on April 23rd. So one week after the live show, we will show it uh, on dpwondemand.com. And dpwondemand.com, we got, we're got we actually starting to uh, boost up what we're putting on there. I, I don't know how much I can give away just yet. There's going to be more than just wrestling shows on there. Um, you, DPW, you already know our first pay-per-view is on there. We have every episode of DPW Fire and DPW Spark on dpwondemand.com. Uh, it is a monthly subscription Thing, but you can pause it at any time so if you just want to check out one show or another and pause your subscription right away and not pay monthly that's totally okay with us uh that stuff really really helps dpw actually so shout out to everyone do that but yeah uh big show malcolm it is actually yeah. crazy this show huge show it's so big you call it paul white dude it's like, too big too super big <laughs> oh, like we have so many like amazing matches going on. Kid Bandit versus Lucky Ali. I'm a big wow. Lucky Ali guy. He's from DC. I'm from DC. Oh, you got the world title match, Bojack, Biff Busick. I mean, like wow. this is gonna go crazy. Like, what matches are you looking forward to specifically? Uh, I, I mean, the first one you said, Kid Bandit and Lucky Ali. That's a match that's been building since legitimately the very first episode of DPW Fire. The very first match on DPW Fire was these two. Uh, in my opinion, they set the standard of what. I think they they shaped really the uh, expectation of a match in DPW with that first match because they just went out there and went crazy and and you know being in the locker room watching people watch the match and people going whoa I think everyone knew they had to like step up a little more and understood what this show was about so I can only imagine uh, what these two are going to get into uh, at DPW forever because that's been a rivalry that's been a brewing Malcolm oh, yeah. uh, B- Biff okay. Biff and BoJack is going to be crazy uh, I. I can't believe Biff Busick is working uh, for DPW. Uh, honestly, man, I don't actually don't know if there's a match I'm not looking forward to. And I know that's like easy for me to say because it's my show. Yeah. Uh, so I come off a little biased, but that's how we do these shows, man. We don't put on stuff just because we're like, oh, okay, we'll just do it. You know, we got Hiroyo Matsumoto coming over from Japan to face Rosemary. And Rosemary is, you know, I consider Rosemary one of our, you know, DPW originals. Oh, and yeah. she's looking to kill it, you know? Uh, God, um, Colby, I mean, you know me, Malcolm. Colby Carino has an, a hardcore open challenge, which as is right up my alley. Colby Carino is a crazy bastard. Uh, so it's gonna that's that's gonna be a, a fun one as well. Um, the work horsemen, JD Drake and Anthony Henry, are coming to whoop Chris Danger's team's ass. I can't wait to see them just beat those dudes up. Oh, I can't wait. I, I just seeing seeing Patrick Scott get stomped out is going to be really just make uh, make my my day very very nice. But yeah, uh, oh my god, <laughs> this Malcolm, this is how crazy the show is. I didn't even think of mentioning the four way, which might yeah. blow the roof off the place. Andrew Everett, Diego Hill, Gringo Loco, and BK Westbrook, which is just like a an insane combination of people that are genuinely out of their mind. Almost a scary match, honestly. Absolutely terrifying. These guys are some of the best high flyers. I was just about to bring that up. They're Diego crazy. Hill, bro, Diego Hill took on Lince Dorado, and that match wow. was absolutely crazy. Like, seeing how good, like, he is and all these other, like, North Carolina guys. Who are some guys on the scene right now that haven't been in DPW that you actually want to see join? Oh, man. Wow. There's actually a uh... – uh, see, I, I want to answer, but I don't know how much because there's people that were like have in mind uh, to bring in around the way. Uh, but I will say there's a guy uh, speaking of Diego Hill, there's a guy uh, Azrael he teams with uh, regularly um, in the North Carolina scene uh, that is out with an injury right now. Um, and he's somebody that we would you know totally uh, enjoy having. And he's, you know, him and Diego are, are, are crazy dudes, man. So uh, that's that's probably like a, the, the one I that comes to mind first. 
definitely. And like, there's so many like great talents that also learn, like work for these other companies, like your uh, Calvin Tankman's and your uh, Rosemary, okay. who's challenging for the Impact Women's Title. Uh, yes. just rebellion, like in a couple of weeks, it'll be on the same day as when. Uh, forever. Of course it is, because well, everyone runs again at the same exactly. time as us. Of course it is. <laughs> but like, was it like working with like these talent that are also like signed to these other companies? Like, does DPW have to talk to Impact or talk to MLW, AEW, etc., or is it just like reaching out to the talent? It's actually you no. Know, um, in terms of surprisingly, um, it's usually straight up through the talent. Usually, if it's an AEW person, I think they have to go through a couple extra steps. Um, yeah. but it's usually it's it's usually not like a like AEW says no like that's never been a thing um it's just like a hey uh, do you need me for this date that's usually what it is with contracted people like if rosemary has an impact date obviously you know she's it's signed right. to impact so and same with tankman if tankman has a date um but it, it's been pretty smooth uh for the most part and and like they're you know they're super i mean you've seen what calvin and rosemary have done on our shows they are like you know they they are coming to to make a make a statement and they they are people that don't have to because they are already super great and everyone loves them but they you know there's a special feeling when you know about dpw that you know wrestlers that have been doing it forever want to come out and kill it which is awesome but yeah yeah no never have any uh issues with with contracted people um which is thank thankfully <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah hopefully that energy but uh, we, let's talk about like the world champion bojack he's been doing Ooh. such a great job representing deadlock pro wrestling he uh he just defended saw against jtg in a yes. arm burner of a match it was absolutely match. amazing wow what's it like been having like uh, bojack as your guys' world champion bojack um is an incredible human oh uh, first of all i mean i can i can talk about his wrestling uh, all day but bojack as a person is a great great dude man uh i i actually am proud that he's our champion um because he is he is everything that i feel like dpw is he like solidify you know he he personifies dpw to me um he you know he wants to do more he he, he wants everything to be better he wants he, like he'll talk about everyone else's match before he even thinks about mentioning his uh he is just like uh wrestling needs more bojacks i think and him being our world champion just it, it, it's it's a perfect fit um not to mention he has been killing it man uh every match we put him in you know we you know we've been putting him he's he had that jtg match that was a, a big deal for him this biff busick match is you know it's it's gonna be uh that's gonna be a tough one i don't know if he's been in there with a guy like biff before because biff is intense man um but that one's gonna be inter you know fun and then we'll see you know see what goes from there but bojack uh i love i love having him in dpw before um we started dpw um, just, you know, just casual talking, you know, James and I talking about wrestling, he would mention BoJack, say like, this dude is like, you know, he's, he's it. I was like, okay. And so I checked and he showed me some stuff. I was like, oh man, this guy is sweet, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it was, uh, it was, it made total sense to have him in, but yeah, I, I, I love me some BoJack. He's great. Oh, for sure. He's definitely like a big team player, like just sitting around the locker room and stuff. I've seen him just like help everyone out and whatnot. Yeah. He's definitely a solid guy to have. He wants to lead. He, he wants to lead that locker room, man. And 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 please do. I mean, that's because if there's anyone that's that wants to be that, I'd love it to be Bojack, man. He's he's just a great dude. For sure, for sure. And like I gotta bring up the name also, Chris Danger. Not a lot of people like him. Oh, you no, know, hey, people people love talking <laughs> about him. Uh, what's your thoughts on having Chris Danger so far in DPW? Is this off the record or on the record? Whatever you want to say. <laughs> oh boy, okay. <laughs> on the record, what a piece of shit. <laughs> just <laughs> the worst man he has made patrick scott and chance riser more annoying than ever uh off the record uh what a what a great dude <laughs> i love having this maniac <laughs> around man he uh he was down from day one to uh be a part of everything and uh which was you know like it was an idea we just had like we were again uh you know we were just talking we were like hey like uh james like i i have these guys you know um uh, the reality uh, they were called the the influence before, yeah. which is what I think them being that name was what sparked the idea. I don't know if it was me or James or Tony that came up with it. But they were like, you yeah, know, maybe what if what if Dank like was a manager here and we floated it to him and he was like totally down right away. He was super excited. <laughs> um, that first night when he like made his like debut was like real special. Um, and he's been he's been doing fantastic. He is. uh he is a maniac and he knows what he, he gets it. He gets it. And nice. man, that's the fun part about the shows, man. Again, off the record. So no one, you know, this doesn't count. Uh, when you come to a DPW show, I think it's the most fun part is that everyone is there to like that. They get it. You know what I mean? Like they want to tell Chris Danger he sucks, but they're like, you know, at intermission, like, hey, 
Chris Danger, can you sign this? <laughs> like everyone wants to be a part of the, you know, what we're doing. And that's very flattering. Um, and, and Chris is a big part of that. Um, it's fun doing stuff uh, with Chris because he's just, he's so, he's a natural man. He's, I mean, he's never done anything like that. And he's just like, you wouldn't know that you, you know, really watching him. Yeah, no way. No, for sure. I mean, like the guy definitely has a lot of talent. I mean, like definitely pro- maybe the longest lines of like people trying to like take pictures and whatnot, but oh my God. Man, they move so hard. And it's fun. Like I'm sitting in the crowd too, just watching. I'm like, yo, I want to flip this guy off. Like, <laughs> right? I know. It's so it, it, the, the the mood changes when Chris Danger comes through the curtain. And like, even though, like you know, I was uh, at, I think it was the last show. He was like walking around. I was like, dude, go out there. People are looking for you. He's like, what do you mean? Like, I he, I don't think he really still grasps that. Like, you know, people come out to see him. Uh, oh, yeah. But he will. He will. Big draw. Big draw. That guy. But like, dude, like you have so many like there's all these other matches going on. Savannah Evans can be part of this qualifier wow. for the women's championship. What's yes. the title gonna look like? Ooh, I uh, we have some inspirations, Malcolm. It is actually being worked on right now. Um, if you, I, I guess if if you've ever listened to any of our thoughts about uh women's championships on the Deadlock podcast, which comes out every Monday, by the way, uh, <laughs> uh, it is uh, it's it's gonna look. As cool, if not cooler, than all the other belts. Uh, obviously, Malcolm, you'll see the new tag team titles yep. uh, making their first appearance at DPW Forever, which is going to be very exciting. Um, we have a very specific, you know, we we want wrestling belts uh, to, I mean, same with everything. DPW is just a love letter to wrestling. We want these belts to look like all the belts we liked, you know, yeah. uh, while also having like, a you know, our own spin on it. Um, but yeah, women's title is going to look very cool. Uh, Savannah Evans, also uh, impact talent. Uh, just got signed, I think, for uh, even longer at Impact. Yeah, she is she is very, very good, man. Uh, very happy to have her a part. Um, Heidi Howitzer is who she's facing, who's making her DPW debut. debut excuse me, And she is cool as hell, man. She's got this crazy look. And I think, I actually think her and Savannah, uh, it's not a match people are, are I, I think it might be the sleeper match uh, of the show because I think those two are going to beat the shit out of each other. And it's going to be very fun. Definitely, dude. And like before we wrap all this up, I want to do a couple little predictions. I want to see what who who you think might actually win these matches. So for the tag team championships, who you think's walking out? The NBA or the workhorsemen? I can't. I I can never. I can never say that I want the NBA to win. Even even if I think they will, I can't. I mean, the workhorsemen have been putting in work forever. This is not just like a you know a a team that's just coming in uh, just for the sake of coming in. They are coming to 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 prove you know that they should be in DPW more. I mean, that's, that, that's how everyone walks into DPW, you know, no matter where they've been in any other company, they come in here to, uh, you know, solidify their spot in DPW and spots are running out, Malcolm. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's a lot of too many good talents on these shows. So spots are, are running in. And then, uh, I I'm going with the work horsemen, man. I mean, they, uh, they're, I think in my mind, I want them to kill these guys. So that's my hope. Yeah. I completely agree. Like anything. Thank you. Yo, I mean, Chris like spit water at me and like, I still felt that. Did he? Yeah, oh, that's right in the interview. What a freak. It was disgusting. It was disgusting. I know. <laughs> uh, look at Lucky Ali and Kid Bandit. Who do you think is going to win that match? That's a tough one. That's a very tough one, man. Um, I feel like Kid Bandit has been holding a lot. You know, there's there's been a lot uh, building to this. It's it's tough um, to say uh, about that one. Lucky Ali is, is for, for all of his faults and how mean he is to me, he is an insanely talented uh, wrestler. Uh, I think, I mean... I, that one could really, really go either way. Lucky got him. Uh, Lucky got Kid in the first one. Uh, Kid's only had more matches that gotten better since then. I would not be surprised if Kid is able to pull that out. You know, they've been working on uh, some uh, some more submissions as of late. Um, but damn, man, Lucky Ali always finds a way to win no matter what the situation. I actually don't know if I can call that one, man. Hey, I'll try to call it for you. I mean, I'm a big Lucky Ali guy. Sure. I got to be a little biased. His location, he's from D.C. I'm from D.C. Shout so, out. I mean, but Kid Bandit, one of the nicest people on planet Earth. Also. Absolutely. Like easily nice person ever, but I don't know, man. I mean, I think Lucky got that. He has that that attitude that might just push him towards the W. So, he uh, I mean, we'll he see. is he always finds a way, doesn't he? He does, even if it's cheating, and it's still if, it, if it's a win, it's a win. You know, it's hopefully he happens. leaves the chairs alone though, Malcolm. That's what I would like. Yeah, I mean, I don't want you guys to like run your credit card up because like those rentals are expensive. You know, so, Malcolm, yeah. I I don't even want to tell you how expensive they are. <laughs> I'm sure they are a lot. Like the ch- chairs don't look cheap. It is a real problem. I know we joke about it. It is a real problem. <laughs> uh, dude, I guess but like the last match that I want to talk about as far as prediction-wise, a world championship. Biff Bojack, who's coming out with the world championship? Man, I uh, I have learned, you know, I mean, Bojack has gone up against 
a lot of dudes. You know, I thought JTG was going to get him. Uh, it came very close. Uh, I have learned. I mean, Andrew Everett. I, I, you know, Andrew Everett and Bojack for the world's title, the very first world's title match to decide, you know, who the first champion was at DPW. You already know. You know, I've been an Andrew Everett guy uh, for longer than uh, I can even tell you. Like, I, I've been an Andrew Everett guy since he was in a mask. He was a masked guy doing double moonsaults. And I, that's so like, you know, I would have said Andrew Everett's got that one. You know, I would have said, uh, you know, Kevin Koo. You know, I would, I thought Kevin Koo was going to be Bojack in the, in the, in the, in the initial tournament. Um, JTG, who's done it all, you know, uh, JTG was very close. And a, a lot of people, you know, thought he was going to win the title. Yeah. Um, I have come to learn that betting on Bojack, I'm just going to lose a lot of money. Um, and not that I want to bet against him, but he's, you know, he's so, you know, he, he, he hasn't been doing it as long as the people that he's been facing and he's still beating them. And it's crazy impressive. But Biff Busick is a guy that I've seen gone through wars. Um, I was a, I was a Biff Busick guy before he got signed. Uh, cause you know, I've like long time CZW guy. Um, so I've seen him, you know, have some killer matches there, killer matches at beyond, um, Biff Busick as has on a run right now after, uh, leaving WWE, that is, um, it's up there with some of the best right now. You know, he's, you know, uh, people are losing the, their minds about their blood, the blood sport match with Moxley. Um, Biff Busek is, is coming for blood. And uh, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little worried at this, you know, I, I'm a little more worried about this one than, than the other ones. Um, because I, I think Biff is, uh, Biff's a different kind of cat, man. He's, you know, he's, he's coming to knock you out. And uh yeah, I, I, but I, you know what? Like I said, I've, I've learned. I don't think I can bet against Bojack. I just don't think I can. You heard it here first. I guess Bojack hopefully might get that W. We'll, we will see. We'll see very soon. This weekend, DBW Forever, guys in Raleigh, North Carolina, April sixteenth. You can find your tickets, everything linked down below. Uh, John, where can you find your social media? Uh, I am on Twitter at John Blood. That's B L U D. Uh, check out the Deadlock Podcast every Monday. We talk about crazy wrestling stuff wherever you find podcasts and you can also find me on twitch and youtube new legacy inc i play a bunch of wrestling video games with a bunch of my boys and we have a lot of fun i'm doing a lot of stuff malcolm it's going crazy over here man heck yeah man guys make sure to like comment share and always subscribe and hopefully bojack you keep that championship we out we man do it we going up like a thousand i'm a flesh just like a muscle man malcolm uh, we going up like a thousand i'm a flesh just like a muscle man malcolm uh, when did you like one two three if you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze.